Hey, this is Noah. This is James. From Arsis, and you're watching Debelly. Debelly. Hi, it's Dave from DeBelly, and tonight we're at uh, Club Red in Mesa, Arizona. We're going to speak to Arsis, um, James, and Noah. Welcome. How are you guys doing this evening? I'm oh, doing well. Doing well. Yeah. Welcome to uh, Mesa, Arizona. Good time of year to come in, and uh, well, good time to be on tour. You're two, three nights into your tour. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about it. Tell me how it's going. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's going. Uh, the, fir the first night was actually pretty rad in uh, San Diego. Uh, good turnout. Um, had really really it was a really good first night of tour as far as like first nights of tour go like uh nothing nothing disastrous happened um and then the second night of tour happened last night in uh pomona california and um so it, it was going pretty pretty uneventful as well and um after our set i went to go get some food uh with a friend of mine from i live in texas and uh an old co-worker of mine is living in uh, LA and he drove down to Pomona for the show. We went out to get a, a bite to, quick bite to eat after our set and uh, I'm sitting at uh, eating some some chicken fingers and mozzarella sticks because I do keto and that was about the only thing that was somewhat keto-ish on the menu that I could get at that hour and um, I get this text from Noah it's like Bill from Decrepit Birth jumped off stage and no one caught him Ooh. and then Noah can probably tell you exactly what happened. So. So, well, well, he does this all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a stage dives and you know, and uh, yeah, he jumped and probably caught the audience off guard and no one caught him. No one caught him, uh, and he broke his femur. Ooh. But you know, they didn't know that at the time. He lands. He's surrounded by people, and he's just lying on the floor. The band's still playing. He's, he's still going. And uh, yeah, so the EMTs came, and he's still going. They're working on him while he <laughs> and uh, and he he wanted to finish the set on the floor right there, um, but you know they you know they took him up, took him to the emergency room. Yeah, you got a broken femur. Uh, and, and, and the show goes it, on. His response was, "Oh man, this is gonna really mess up my surfing." <laughs> so he's a, he's a rad dude. Uh, um, I could see him finishing the tour in a wheelchair. He's a he's a fighter, man. And the show does go on. Absolutely. Yeah. Now you guys. So we're we're headlining tonight instead of the Purple Bird, but you know <laughs> it is it is what it is. We just gotta yeah. you know make it happen, I guess. Yeah, that's that's exactly. It. Exactly. It. But those guys those guys are gonna catch up to yeah. the, the tour, so that's what we understand. Give them a couple of days, get their well, yeah. sorry, get their feet back on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and uh, Bill is an avid surfer, so I'm, I'm thinking I want to I want to nickname him uh, Point Break. I'm not sure if it's too soon. Bodie, but, 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 uh, yeah, but maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. It's, that's a beautiful thing. It is. Well, this may come as a surprise to you guys, but you got an album coming out. We do. We want to hear about it. Talk, talk. Come on. You? No? Yeah, it's uh, it comes out uh, November second, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Uh, it's called Visitant. Uh, a lot of good tunes that are inspired by horror movies um, of all sorts. Uh, a lot of John Carpenter. Uh, I'm, Jim could elaborate on on uh, which movies, and uh, obviously my favorite's the one about uh, Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions. I think that that track is a. You, you love that Scott Bakula. I love that Scott Bakula. You do. <laughs> you pull. Um, yeah, it's honestly it's my favorite artist's album to date. It's the most diverse as far as the songs go. Each one stands on its own. And I know everyone says, "Oh, this is the latest greatest. It's the best one." Uh, but I think this one will, will stand the test of time. This one will stick around for a while. Um, it's captured raw performances. It's not perfect by all means. And like a lot of records that you hear today, it's there are some mistakes in it. It's it's not perfect. It's it's it's, it's raw. It's unadulterated. <laughs> that, that live aspect of the record, though, I think really brings life to many albums. It gives it an honesty. Yeah, when I, when I hear a record, I, I want to hear the springs in your tram system, you know? <laughs> I want to hear, like, 
You know, when I listen to a jazz album, I want to hear the keys on your sax, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that, I know a human played that. Exactly. And that's, that's what we hoped to capture on this, for sure. And, and you know, and that's, uh, you know, beyond the songwriting, beyond the songs, beyond the, the art, we wanted to capture the live element of the band. You mentioned already that it's, um, it's a bit of a theme record. Sometimes with theme albums, you have to consume it in large chunks or in an, is an entirety. Um, but you're mentioning the song standalone. Talk a little bit about that and the aspect of just writing the songs to be their, their own entity. Okay. Well, um, so it is themed in that every song is uh, very loosely and vaguely inspired by a, by a different horror film. And when I say inspired by, I'm not like trying to like recant the movie and the lyrics or anything like that. That's yeah. not that was not my objective. But more more so like just like when when I put on like a, a completed song that we had, just like what what images came to my mind and how I. I, I just ended up relating a lot of them to different horror movies, and I think a big part of that for me, anyway, was that like that was one thing that my my father and I like connected on, and uh, he passed away this year. So, um, and I knew it was coming. It was it been coming for quite quite a while, and I think part of the reason that we have horror as like a genre is just to help us like try to deal with that. Anyway, so um, that you know uh, that, that's what it means to me, anyhow. But every the, all the lyrics I think are so so vague and just like a loose loose interpretation of, of the, the movies that they're inspired by that any, anyone can probably like uh, attach their own meanings to the lyrics and whatnot. So in that respect, I think you could consume it like one song at a time and just take away from it what you want to in that, in that given moment. And it doesn't require any reflection on like the song that came before or after it to appreciate it. So. That's very cool. I know you got a couple of videos out for it already. One is a lyric video and the other one uh, tricking God? Uh, tricking the Gods. Tricking the Gods. Yes. Um, it's a wild video. A little, yeah. little bizarre. <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely some, some bizarre elements to it. And essentially, uh, so my girlfriend um, did a short horror film last year, and uh, the director of photography that she ended up hiring, um, I, I ended up hiring him to, or, you know, we ended up hiring him for this video, um, but he, uh, Basically, we, we just kind of went to him. We we're like, hey, like, this is the money we have. Like, this is what the song is like, loosely inspired by. Like, what can you, what can you do? And he gave us a treatment, and we approved it. So, essentially, in the video, there's a uh, kind of like this weird, like, faux Illuminati cult that is um, doing a blood ritual. Um, they they turn somebody into a werewolf. The werewolf then in turn like, uh, well. And two of the cult members, I guess, are kind of there to like try to kill this beast. And um, World gets pissed off, starts killing the cult members, and at the end, gets shot with a sword bullet, etc., etc. Et 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 um, yeah, it's, it's. I definitely think it's a very like throwback '70s type of horror vibe, like with the the colors, just just kind of like almost like um, like this real like Technicolor type aspect to it that you would see in like a Dario Argento film. And Rob knows that I like Dario Argento, so he probably like went that way on purpose, I would say. Um, but I think I think it's really cool. It's um, it is kind of bizarre. It does have that bizarre kind of like surreal element to it that that you would see in like a lot of some seventies horror films. And, uh, uh, almost a clown type of vibe on the, on the like, main character, the white. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was actually my girlfriend. And she's just, she's not. Um, doesn't look like that at all, but then she was she was in makeup for like three hours to give her like this weird albino type of you know effect. So yeah, yeah. That's very cool. Very cool. Um, the record itself. Did you guys work with the producers? Is self produced? How how do you guys write? Yeah, talk about about the assembly of the album and, and the whole thing. Man, well, I, I I don't think we write that differently than like a lot of bands these days uh, through the internet. Like because we're geographically we're like yeah. we're pretty spread out. Um, so like you know. One of us comes up with some initial ideas, we demo it, we send it out to everybody, everybody puts their own stamp on it. And then when it comes time to record, this one, in the past we've all kind of been in one spot for the recording, actual recording of the record. This one kind of was recorded in a lot of the same way that fashion that it was written and that, you know, uh, we, we kind of recorded by ourselves and then it was brought together. So we didn't work with the producer for like songwriting necessarily, but Mark, Definitely, Mark Lewis, who produced our last record, he produced this record. He was definitely involved in terms of the overall like presentation of the album, in there terms of in terms of tunes and whatnot. So we don't, 
I think a lot of people think of like a producer in the traditional sense of you know just kind of being in the control room and being like, hey guys, I don't know about that melody, like. Maybe you should try this. Like, he doesn't really do that with us because he thinks we are, like, pretty competent musicians. But that's not to say that if he hears something that he thinks is a little fucky, he's not going to be like, hey, like, maybe you should rethink that harmony. You know? So. Yeah, yeah technology is amazing things yeah. these days. There are so many bands out here that don't live nearby. And just having that ability to, you know, reach out each other to each other electronically with the album, you know, their chunks. That's, that's right. an amazing aspect. But, but that also gave us the opportunity to spend time. Like when you were in a studio, it costs money. Yeah. And, and you take time out of your life to, yeah. to, to go there and do the thing and, and, and see it till, till the end. So we were afforded the luxury of, of casually working on our parts and not interrupting our daily lives, putting a lot of time into it, that's for sure. But, but we were able to work parts under our fingers, make sure everything was smooth, uh, and um, and get good performances. That was that was really important to us. Yeah. Um, whereas in the past, yeah, some there are a lot of performances we listened to. I mean, you're you're your own worst critic, certainly. Oh, but yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, now we were able to just hey, here's a bunch of great performances. Just send them in, and Mark's like, thanks for the great tracks, and and put it together. Uh, and that was, um, we're, we're pretty thankful for that. Yeah. Thanks, Internet. <laughs> Speaking of casual, five years, five year cycle, that's a long time for a record. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't work on the record the entire five years, no. but... Uh, no, no, but, you know, ideas started flowing pretty much since the last record. Uh, we had bits that were left over that we kind of explored and then abandoned and then uh, some of them kind of morphed and then got abandoned again. And uh, so, so it was a little bit of a, a process, but eventually um, eventually they just started pouring out of Jim. Uh, pouring out of James and uh, yeah, over the course of what, three, four months maybe? Oh, come on. It's all right. Um, <laughs> man, I, yeah, I guess you know, over like a six month period, like you know, a lot of like you know, a lot of my ideas that I contributed, you know, kind of finally started to come together. But as Noah was saying, like, I mean, we we were like working on, we had like completed songs like even like three years ago that ended up on the record. So, um, so yeah, there was some work being put in, but it was very casual, like super casual, and like. Um, but we also had like a pretty long like touring cycle in the record too, because we were still yeah. like touring pretty actively for Unwelcome, like well into 2015, and even did like some touring in 2016. So it's not like we were like completely like inactive. But you know, Brandon joined the Black Dahlia Murder. Mm -hmm. You uh, had uh, Necro Necromancing, Necromancing the Stone. stone so yeah. there was uh, there was other stuff to take some attention away from Marsis. But I don't know. I don't know. Like um, I was talking about it with Brandon, um, and uh, he was just like, you know, I, I think if we had like. If we hadn't waited, it wouldn't have come out as cool as it did, you know. So he, uh, you know, he was feeling good that we had like taken the time to like, you know, just like, hey, this is actually a record we stand behind, instead of just trying to get something out to like tour on it, you know. Just let's just get on the road, man. The last, the last, probably the last time that that kind of time was spent on an Arsis record, the first album, was the first album, Celebration yeah. of Gill. So it's. it's so I think it really paid off. Well, you be the judge. <laughs> well, be the judge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you be the judge. <laughs> well, it's kind of cool to be a band today and to be in the position where the, the record comes out when it's ready. And you know, that's always the right answer because oh yeah, yeah. You know, albums have been rushed in the past, not necessarily for the best reasons. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, guilty as charged. <laughs> so, like, I mean, yeah, it, it happens. So it's out, and well, it's soon to be out. By the time this comes out, the record will be out. Yeah, everybody pick it up, by the way. Um, so the tour starts, Bloodlighting Tour. You're going off for a while on this one, and I suspect there'll be more to come after. Talk a little bit about your touring ideas for the rest of the year and into 2019. Yeah, well, um, we have this. This is like kind of a big deal for us. We got asked to do this tour um, quite a while ago. So, um, so that's awesome. Uh, we're, we're working with a new booking agency in Europe, and we also have a new rep with European record label that's releasing that album as well. So we'll be working with Nuclear Blast in the Americas and then Agonia Records in Europe, and they seem like really behind the record and like 
um, which is a good feeling. Not that Nuclear Blast Europe wasn't behind the records that they released, because they absolutely were, but Unwelcome didn't get a uh, European release. So this one, it's got, got some muscle behind it. It seems like they're, they're really trying to push it. They hooked us up with a new agent in Europe. So hopefully it seems like there's going to be some stuff to come there. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's, I think people should just you know, expect to see us. So. That sounds like great. How about you? Yeah. Any input? Well, there's you know things in the works that we can't really discuss yet. But, what? <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be prudent. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to look forward to you then in 2019. All over the place. Prudence. <laughs> yes, prudence. <laughs> We're going to look forward to seeing more of our system in uh, 2019. I'm sure they're going to be back around for at least one more tour next year, and maybe more. And uh, this, you know, this is your opportunity to taste the album. It's out November 2nd, and. Um, Come see him, all right? Thanks much. Have a good night.